Okay, good morning, everyone. I think we're ready to get started. Good morning. Thank you for coming, and welcome to MIT. My name is Nate Nickerson. I'm the Director of Communications for MIT. Uh, in a moment, I'll, I'll introduce President uh, Susan Hockfield, uh, who will offer remarks. She will be followed by Professor Diamond. And just a note on mechanics uh, for the press, Patty Richards, Director of Media Relations for MIT, will moderate uh, questions for Professor Diamond uh, after his remarks. Uh, and now I'd like to introduce Susan Hockfield, President of MIT. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's a great morning. I'm delighted to have the privilege of announcing that Peter A. Diamond, Institute Professor and Professor of Economics at MIT, has been awarded the Nobel Prize in Economic Science for 2010, along with Dale T. Mortensen and Christopher A. Pizzarides. As a professional economist, Peter has embraced the role of public citizen conducting highly influential research over five decades on a remarkably diverse range of subjects, from taxation, public debt, social security, and other forms of social insurance, along with his work on markets for which he has been awarded this year's Nobel Prize. Peter has been a leading intellectual citizen at MIT since his days here as a graduate student, having received his MIT PhD in 1963. He himself has supervised over 50 doctoral dissertations, taught core graduate classes in economic theory and public economics, and collaborated extensively with colleagues on his high-impact research program. He's been an active citizen of the MIT community. He served on the Presidential Search Committee and deployed his expertise on a recent committee from the university addressing employee retirement programs. He served as the head of the Department of Economics in the 1980s. Now, after a career of service through which his scholarship has served the country, Peter has an opportunity to serve more formally, having been nominated this year by President Barack Obama to be on the board of governors of the Federal Reserve Bank. Peter has previously received a huge host of awards and honors over the years. He's the first holder of the Paul A. Samuelson Professorship of Economics, named to that position in 1992. He was named an institute professor, our highest professorship, in 1997. He received the Killian Award from this community in 2003. He's received Guggenheim and Fulbright Fellowships. He's a fellow of the National Academy of Arts and Sciences and a member of the National Academy of Sciences. Peter now becomes the fourth person to win the Nobel Prize as a member of MIT's Department of Economics, following his distinguished colleagues Franco Medigliani in 1985 and his dual graduate advisors, Paul Samuelson, who won 1970, and Professor Robert M. Solo, who won 1987, who is with us today. Peter is truly a citizen servant, marrying his extraordinary intellect with a depth of warmth and human compassion. In the spirit of the MIT economics department that was set by Paul Samuelson and Bob Solo, ladies and gentlemen, it is with pride I welcome MIT's new Nobel laureate in economics, Professor Peter Diamond. Thank you all. Thank you for those lovely remarks, Susan. Uh, obviously, I've got to start with uh, elated, delighted, honored. Um, it's a wonderful day. It didn't start out wonderfully. I was on the red eye. Uh, I only learned about this on Starro Drive on my way home. Uh, <laughs> And the red eye from San Francisco was the last leg of a trip that started in Queenstown, New Zealand. Uh, so if I fall asleep during my remarks, I hope you'll all forgive me. Uh, I'm delighted uh, that Bob Solo is here, uh, my mentor, my thesis advisor, uh, a model uh, for me and many others. 
and Risha Samuelson. Of course, we're all sad that Paul couldn't be here. Uh, Paul uh, laid out wonderful things, wonderful ideas, wonderful interactions. Uh, MIT Economics Department and MIT generally uh, has just been a perfect place for me. Uh, I've stayed around this long, not because I couldn't find another job, but because I couldn't imagine a better job. Uh, so I'm delighted uh, that I actually got back today uh, in order to do the press conference and uh, do this all properly. Uh, I think that's enough, Patty. Okay. Thank you. Thank you all for coming out today on a holiday. We're going to take some questions from the audience, and we also have a phone bridge, which is hopefully working, so we'll take calls as well. We start with a question from the audience. And you identify yourself, please, when Greg you? Greg Wayland, NECN. Great. Uh, Professor Diamond, I still don't think we've heard your reaction, I mean, your real reaction to, uh, to having received this honor, and why you think you received this honor. Um. I think you heard my reaction, elated, delighted, honored. I mean, I could string another sequence of adjectives along there, but uh, I think that captures it. Uh, I did have uh, a moment to glance at the uh, statement by the Nobel Foundation uh, that this is for the analysis of markets with search frictions, markets that don't work ideally. Uh, that's realistic, and in particular, there have been multiple applications, but the particularly important one, important in these times, is around unemployment. Uh, I noticed that Chris Pissarides, uh, one of the co-laureates and more important, one of the important co-workers uh, in search theory applied to labor, uh, said at the uh, conference, uh, in Sweden that it's so very important to get people back to work uh, because when people are out of work too long, it breaks the connection to the labor market. It makes the economy function poorly thereafter. So the more rapidly we can get the world economy growing faster, the better. Okay. Uh, we'll take the next call from the phone bridge. I believe Mark Pratt, are you there? Can you Okay, from the Associated Press. Hi, Professor. I wonder if you just tell us again um, how you learned about it. You said you learned about it. You coming from um, Red Eye from San Francisco, and you heard about it on Star Can you tell that story a little bit more? Who called you and what your reaction was at that time? Um, my wife and son Matt, who was here, uh, picked me up at Logan, uh, and we were driving back. They had not said anything. Uh, <laughs> And uh, I won't speculate in public as to why. And uh, my cell phone rang, and it was my good friend Nick Stern calling from London. He's a colleague of Chris Pissarides at LSE. Uh, and so he had heard about it, and he called to congratulate me, and then was rather flabbergasted to discover that it was from him I had learned about it. <laughs> Could you tell us just your initial reaction? I think a lot of people wonder, I mean, not that a lot of people are going to get this call, but a lot of people, especially those of us who aren't going to ever get this call, wonder sort of what that's like. Um, well, fortunately, I was sitting down, and I wasn't behind the steering wheel. <laughs> uh, and it kind of takes your breath away. Uh, it's just uh, you suddenly realize not only is it the, the, the moment uh, but also there are all sorts of uh, changes in your life, opportunities opening up, uh, all sorts of things that are going to be different. And so you kind of hold your breath for a little while. Thank you. I, I believe we have a gentleman on the phone from Science Magazine. If, if I might ask a quick question about uh, a little bit more technical. So my understanding is that you developed essentially a mathematical model for differential equations. Uh, Uh, 
Yes, that's right. Part of uh, the thrust of my work um, in a number of realms is to pay much closer attention to how the economy plays out in real time uh, than in the simplest abstractions of how markets work. And so I've long been interested in how things play out in time. And obviously, in the labor market, uh, it takes time for workers to find suitable jobs. It takes time for employers to find suitable workers. And that dynamic has a feedback into how wages are determined, how efficient the economy is. And so, yes, it was very much dynamic equations um, incorporating uh, a process of organizing the labor market, but I also worked on a consumer goods market and models of the economy as a whole. And all of them, the dynamics matter for what happens in the economy. I believe we have uh, Catherine Rambell from the New York Times calling in. Do I have that right? Yes. Okay. Hi, this is Catherine Rambell. Thanks so much for, uh, for taking the call and congratulations, of course. Uh, I'm curious about what you think the applications of your work are to current policy issues. In particular, the question of long-term unemployment, what kinds of policy prescriptions, other than generally um, trying to put people back to work, what, what are the actual tools that, that are applied by your research? The focus of the research paying attention to the labor market is really how things play out over time. Uh, and as, as Chris Pissaridis said, the importance of getting people back to work quickly and recognizing that it is indeed a process, that the um, economy goes into a serious recession. There are going to be people who are going to be long-term unemployed because they don't find something suitable uh, in shorter times. The number of vacancies relative to the amount of unemployment goes down. It gets harder to find a job. It's a stochastic process for most people. And so with any stochastic process, there will be realizations where some people find jobs quickly and others find them slowly. Uh, it is a commonplace in recessions to suggest this time is different, this time it's structural, this time we're not going back to uh, lower unemployment. Um, I think, uh, along with the Reinhardt Rogoff book, when you hear this time is different, you should be skeptical. Okay, do other 